like the tone of your voice isn't right. You have, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong. Basically just pointing out that I was a shit singer. In front of people, like seeing my peers, you know, people who I'm not close with, you know, these are a bunch of strangers I just went on camp with that we all sang. It was humiliating. Like it was humiliating to have that. And I was in my head, I was like, Alice, don't cry. Alice, don't cry. Alice, don't cry. Alice, don't cry. Because I was like, keep your shit together. Just hold it in. I was like, I was standing there nodding, just being like, yep, yep. Okay, okay. I'm a shit singer. Yep, yep, yep. And I remember sitting down and I just had to go to the bathroom and cry. And I was like, I just felt pathetic. Like, I was like, why am I crying? But I knew why I was crying, but I just didn't want to cry because I was like, this is so embarrassing. I remember coming back out and I sat down. And it was so cute. I'll never forget this. This little girl, because like there would be a range of ages and this really young girl, she was like really young. She turned to me and she was like, hi, like, I just wanted to let you know that I know he was being really mean to you, but I think you're a really good singer and I think you should keep singing that song because you sounded really nice. Oh my God. I think I like died when that happened. Like it was so cute that this young girl was just trying to be supportive and being like could see that I was so upset but like she was so young and like I was just surprised that she felt like because you know I'm trying to be the mature one because I'm aware that there are young people there and I don't want to seem like this pathetic teenager but to have that felt so nice and I've carried that with me forever knowing that like I I understand if it wasn't a great performance. I totally respect that. I don't doubt that it was not great. But having someone still recognize like, hey, you did this well. It just felt so good. And I've kept that with me because anytime anyone sings for me or I listen to other people, I'm always willing to give criticism, but I always want to come at it from an angle of like, I want to make you feel like that, that, that you're doing these parts well and that, that working on that even more will make you even better. And keeping a balance of positivity And criticism is so valuable because like, yes, of course, you don't want to just tell people that they're good all the time, but you also don't just want to tell people this shit because that's not telling them what they could do better. That teacher never told me this is how you could sing that song better. He just said, don't sing that song, which is very unhelpful um, and is completely useless for me in terms of improving my voice. You know, I was always open to improving my voice, but shutting me down like that, it was like, you're not even giving me the opportunity to be better. Now, I want to come back to the point of telling people that they're good all the time and how dangerous this is. So I've met people who have the ego the size of the earth, like they think they are top shit. And I remember one of the, like, oh, this memory will always stay with me. I was on one of these camps and I remember passing someone in the elevator. And it was a boy who was like, you know, everyone thought he was like the really good looking one. And like he sang jazz. And I don't know why, but when boys sing jazz and tuxedos, everyone just like loses their shit. Because I think it's like, you know, Michael Bublé, like that whole like sex appeal thing. Frank Sinatra. I don't know. There's something about it. Anyway, this guy, everyone just like drooled over and his voice was amazing. Undeniably amazing. And I remember going up to him and I was was like, oh, like, I just wanted to let you know, like, your performance was amazing last night, like, blah, blah, blah. And he just looked at me and he was like, yeah, I know. Now, if that was, like, meant to be a joke, then, yeah, like, we would have laughed about it and be like, oh, my God, you're so funny, blah, blah, blah. He literally death stared me and was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, okay, awkward. Like, who says that? Who who says that? And, 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 And everyone was constantly telling him he was good. And I was like, guys, stop telling him he's good. 
He doesn't care. And he almost seemed irritated that people were telling him that he was good, which is crazy because, like, I am always over the moon when people give me, like, good feedback. And, like, I am appreciative always. And I'm always telling myself, one day that could all be gone. People could tell you that you're shit and never good again. So I always take it so, like... I'm so grateful, but he just seemed like, stop telling me I'm good. I hear it all the time. Fuck off. And I was like, I really regret telling you you're good because you're so up yourself. (laughs) Now, I'm not going to get into it, but basically... When you really look at it and you're really a part of the whole, you know, creative bubble, people can be mean. They can be backstabbing. They can use you. They're exploitative. Um, People are just in it for themselves. It's selfish. It's this. It's that. There's a lot of negatives in, in the creative world, you know, and I, the more that I was part of it, or I guess I'm still somewhat part of it, but it's like you just realize how toxic it can be and finding people and connecting with people who are not going to be like that is massively important. And I value everyone who I've known from early high school who I'm still connected to now who are like musicians and singers and stuff or artists that I trust or like people that I've met at uni who I'm like, I trust you because it's like, and it's so sad, but it's like, it's so important to have that because you don't want to be in a situation where you feel like you're being used and you're going to have to have an uncomfortable conversation with that person or you feel like that person is, you know, backstabbing you. And I, I, there was a situation that I was in, which I'm not going to obviously talk about, but there was a situation where someone basically went behind my back and was undermining me in a certain way to do with like my singing. And it, it, I just, it broke my heart because I was like, why? Like, what, what do you get out of that to like do that? And It really made me realize, especially at the end of high school, I reflected on all the performing and and all the people that I had met. And a situation like that really broke it for me. And it really made me consider, is that something I want to be a part of? Is that something that I'm proud to be a part of? And it's just not. I, I don't want to be part of something that is like that, where people just are so consumed in their own gain and their own success that they just, they blindside people and they they don't even care who they hurt. And it's like, that really pissed me off. And I definitely got my own (laughs) revenge and karma definitely played its part in that. But in saying that, it's like, I don't want that. I, that's not who I am. I love to sing and I'll always be a singer at heart, but I will never do that to people. And I I won't bring people down or make them feel like they are any less than me. Um, And I really have tried to vow to that. Um, And that's why I kind of created, you know, Seamon's Productions and it, this I, I obviously yes, Seamon's Productions is a way for me to kind of platform my own productions, but I also want to enhance and elevate and discuss other artists and and bring their talents to the forefront because to me that's always been important. And I've I don't expect that from other people, but I truly believe that collaborating and giving you know a spotlight to other people is just as important because. No one in the world is the best. Yes, there are the greats, but you could all argue that they have some positives, they have some negatives. Like, no one's the best in the world, and there'll always be something new and greater and whatever. And I feel like success can get 
like really messed up in your head and perfectionism and you know blood sweat and tears and like there's this kind of romanticized idea of what you know success is and it can be brutal and some would argue that the only way to be truly successful is to fucking make a deal with the devil and hey maybe that is the case but I do not want to take that path it's just not who I am and maybe it is for other people, but it's, it's just not who I am. And I'm not saying that I don't want to be a singer because then I would have to make a deal with the devil. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is over the years and realizing that there is a level of sacrifice that you have to make in order to be a successful artist, a successful musician... There are some sacrifices that I just personally am not willing to take. And maybe if I was happy to be very, like, you know, independent in who I am and just be like, screw you, I'm not going to play the game, maybe maybe I'd find my own success. But the fact is, they're the exceptions. And I don't really feel like an exception in this case. Um, and I just want to sing. I, I, whether it's, you know, for, for free or if I get paid 50 bucks for it. Um, but I, I don't really care. And I think when you realize you don't actually care that much, you realize maybe this is not the career for me. (laughs) And I was okay with that. I think realizing that I was okay with the fact that I don't want to be a singer was fine. But I feel like there was all this pressure to be like, well, you're good at it, so you should do it. And it's like, why should I do something that I'm good at? It, like, yes, that to some degree does make sense, but it's like, but I don't have to do it. It's not like I have to be a singer. And I think the most like relieving thing was just being like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be a singer. I will continue to sing, but I, I won't actively pursue it. And the world's not going to implode. I'm not going to implode. Everything's going to be fine. And that's why I created Artist and Alice, because for me, it's a way of platforming people who, they want to do other things. They, they, they may want to be a doctor, or maybe they want to be a tech person, or maybe they want to study something completely unrelated to music or art. But I want to showcase them, and I want to give them the opportunity to be appreciated, like any artist should be. You shouldn't have to pursue it full-time to be appreciated. That's just personally my opinion. And I think there are other platforms for people who are pursuing it full-time to be showcased. And that's great. And that's for them. But I really want to focus on the people who maybe don't have that opportunity. They don't have a large following or they don't, you know, they're not massive social media people who are trying to make a name for themselves or, you know, they, they literally may not even have a song out ever, but it's like, I just want to give them the spotlight for a second in a virtual open mic sense. I remember watching X Factor one time when I was like really young and I remember I think it was like Simon Cowell or something said this and he was like talking to the person who had just sung and he was like what do you do and the person was like well I'm studying and I have like this plan B if singing doesn't work out kind of thing and Simon Cowell was literally like then you're never going to be a singer. And he and the singer was like, wait, what do you mean? And he was like, if you have a plan B, that means you're not completely committed. And this really fucking irritated me because I was like, okay, maybe, you're se- maybe you don't think that person is fully committed and they're ready to give their blood, sweat and tears. But like, why... Why is it like this concept that if you do one thing and one thing only, then you'll be the greatest? Because from where I'm sitting, having a wide range of skills, having a a wide range of knowledge in different things and learning about different people and having different types of jobs and really understanding the world and other people and 
to me, that is a greater way to success. To me, tunnel vision on one thing and one thing only and not allowing any other skills in, you're basically just disadvantaging. 